All right. Uh, it's 5.30. I'll call this meeting to order. And uh, if you could please rise and join me in the place of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we need a motion for the adoption of the agenda and consent agenda as an order of business with the identification of items to be taken off the consent agenda, agenda for discussion or separate action. Uh, I move we adopt the agenda and consent agenda. To our second. Second. All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Okay, we will consider the approval of the consent agenda as adopted. Approve the minutes of May 18th, 2021, Board of Education meeting. Approve the financial report for the period July 1, 2020 through May 31st, 2021. Approve bills for the period May 21, 2021 through May 31st, 2021, in the amount of $2,370,666.62. Is there a motion? So moved. And a second. second. And a second. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Uh, board election, board vacancy. Uh, we are still waiting for Laura to arrive, so we're going to move this down in the agenda, and uh, then when a Laura, Laura comes, we'll move it back into the agenda. Um, if there's no opposition to that, uh, we'll make that change to the agenda. Um, moving on, we have uh, public hearing waiver of certain board or school district requirements instructional hours for students pursuant to Wisconsin statute 118.381 and 1M the public will be afforded the opportunity to address the uh, district's request of a waiver of certain board school board or district requirements yes. what does that mean Dan what does that mean? <laughs> Uh, as you are aware, and you already have uh, done the um, uh, waiver for educator effectiveness earlier in this year, last year in April, you approved this same waiver for instructional hours. There's a requirement for a certain number of instructional hours for all grade levels, and um, in this case, uh, there are waivers because of COVID and the changes in many schools that you're allowed to apply for it through DPI. On advice of DPI, uh, Mike Thompson, he said, wait until the very end until you see which types of waivers you might or might not need, which was sound advice because as it turns out, some of the accounting for those discretionary funds that were separated by the um, Joint Finance Committee that were coming in as COVID dollars are going to have some kind of accounting that nobody is quite sure of yet of uh, what that's going to be for instructional hours. So, although we believe that we, we know that we've uh, met our regular instructional hours for this year, the accounting system for the hours for those particular dollars of COVID relief, we're not exactly sure. So, if we do the waiver, in the resolution that you, the, whoever makes the resolution, there is a little part there that says, you also grant the superintendent to make uh, additional information available to DPI if needed for any other reason. And that is why we'd like to have that, uh, that waiver of instructional hours. It gives us the flexibility to make sure we can apply for those COVID uh, relief dollars um, appropriately. I know, does that make sense? Sort of. <laughs> Basically, we're giving you, the administration, the authority to make the decision around instructional hours? Or a the waiver give, grants us, the, the district, the authority not to meet the instructional hours, okay. but also to provide information to DPI 
around any other issue related to instructional hours. So that is the part that we aren't quite sure about yet because we haven't been provided this system of accounting for instructional hours that will provide us that um, additional funding from the COVID dollars. Okay. <laughs> you could, any questions regarding this? I mean, at first when I read it, and I'm wondering, does the does the layman hear that like it sounds like we're we're trying to get out of the minimum requirement of instructional hours? Is that is that not true? We don't we don't need to. Uh, we did that last year because of COVID, right? We did last year because of COVID. Um, every other district in the county is doing the same one, uh, this waiver, because of the second part of it, which is about um, how the accounting for uh, the COVID relief dollars is going to be um, applied to the hours of instruction. So they're going to have a minimum requirement, I assume, to meet to, there is, to yeah, funding. That, and we're going to want to hit that minimum requirement so we receive COVID funding. Well, yeah. There will be a there will be a formula that every district has to put all of their kids' hours into, which will equate to some level of funding that comes back from that holdback that the legislature pulled out from, remember we were supposed to get 890 and then now we're getting 680, something along those lines. That chunk of money is sitting there and it's going to be dependent on the formula that we plug into. So our ability to plug into that formula and to give that money or give that the second half of this waiver gives us the authority to make sure we can go back and forth with DPI and, and make sure we're getting the best bang for our buck. And you're waiving for this last year? Yeah. So it's not that we're asking for future waiving. We're waiving. We're already completed with the year. We have all our minutes, and it's more or less a little bit of a, a game to make sure that we're safeguarding ourselves to receiving funds. So moved. <laughs> well, actually, we have a, a best solution. <laughs> yeah, if, if someone can uh, put forward that resolution, and then we can have a vote. Yeah, number eight in the background statement is a sample resolution. I move to adopt the resolution requesting a waiver of the instructional hours requirements for students during the 2021-2020-2021 school year in light of the ongoing COVID-19 public health emergency. The waiver will be requested through the Department of Public Instruction's expedited waiver process. The school board authorizes the district superintendent to take any other actions necessary to complete the waiver request process with the Department of All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Okay, it passes. And I believe, uh, Laura, yes? Yes. Um, okay, we've, we've moved the agenda around. Um, so we have Laura and Janelle. Uh, they're both here uh, to be considered for the open seat on our board. Um, We'd like Richard's computer to stop making noise. <laughs> uh, what, I, what we'd like to do is, uh, I know you both came before the Committee of the Whole. I was not in attendance at the meeting. Sally, were you at no, that no, meeting? No, I was not. So um, uh, I guess, hello. <laughs> we both have read um, your, your application, so we have a little bit of background, but if do, do you have anything else you'd like to add just about maybe your interest in the school board? Uh, I mean, we've read it here, but if I could, if you could both maybe just say a few words, that'd be great. Uh, Janelle, if you want to start. Um, well, I'm Janelle Bone, and um, I've lived in the school district since 2012, and my two daughters graduated from, from the high school in 2018 and 2020, yes, um, or 16 and 18, actually, so. Um, my daughters knew I was interested in board a number of years ago, and like, wait till we're out, wait till we're out. So yes, it's always got a hard to help again and get more involved. And through 
change the circumstances. Now I work at the legal department at Johnsonville, and I guess last week I was thinking, I'm the corporate paralegal. I've been at a large law firm for 31 years, and I work on mergers and acquisitions. And I am the one who does all the licensing and regulatory filings to maintain licenses and permits and set up entities. So I'm very accustomed to paperwork and formalities and connecting dots and all that. And I've led a girls group in Cedar Grove, and I just have a hard to help with children. And I'm the one who seems to figure out what are the fine print details and try to get things working. So if I can be of service, I'm available. Thank you. Thank you. Laura? Uh, we worked with Plymouth more recently, as you all know. Um, short bit of background, I can't remember exactly what I wrote on the paperwork. Um, I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner, so I'm, children are my um, passion, my career, my life, really. We have four kids. Um, at the time I got on the school board in BRAM, I gave them a little background the other day that I'd started just as a classroom volunteer, then moved on to PTO president, and then started attending board meetings. And the superintendent called when a vacancy came up and said, you've been at all our meetings for six years. Do you want to come here? Do you want to sit at the table? So obviously I applied. There were a group that applied and all that. Um, at the time I started, all four of our kids were in the district. Um, we have one that um, has met the needs, so had a 504 plan, so we've worked through that. We have one that we adopted two weeks before kindergarten from another country that didn't speak English. So we've got met the ELL route. So it, we just had a lot of experiences in the school district and I'm just so impressed at what schools do to help families. So I just have a passion for kids and be interested in helping out here if I'm needed. I loved my years on the school board. Not without controversy. I mean there's always some there's always interesting some. <laughs> when we changed retirement that was challenging. But fantastic. Uh, does anyone have any other questions for Laura Janelle before we take a vote? Bob, I think that uh, um, Laura has uh, shared with me that she has uh, some schedule um, issues that perhaps we should consider here. Uh, she's working presently in Beaver Dam and the uh, 530 time on Mondays, apparently in the clinic, uh, clinic uh, work, Mondays and particularly the later afternoon hours are uh, uh, a little challenging to get out of. And so... Uh, you know, I think the school board should should consider uh, that that uh, we may want to change the time of our Monday committee of the whole meeting. Uh, we do have a little bit of precedence in that uh, some years back we were considering uh, a potential candidate for the school board who had a job in Fond du Lac and, and you know, whether we would move uh, to a later time and so I, before we vote, I wanted to bring that up. And maybe, Laura, you could speak to that a little bit more. Okay. Oh, I apologize for being late, too. I did take my daughter to walk and show. I got snarled and crap a couple of back. I'm not usually late to things. Um, no, I currently work in a clinic for BRAM on Mondays. And Monday afternoon is time appointments. Um, if it was a make or break deal, don't change the time. I'd be willing to get here by 5.30. But it just would be very nice to my bosses, really, to do that once a month. So I just wanted to share that up front before you guys made a decision. Just if there would be some thought to get a little bit later on Monday night, that would be potentially nice. But we're flexible, and obviously a decision hasn't been made. Okay. We used okay. to we used to do the actual school board meeting at 7 p.m. Yeah, but the meeting of the whole on the Monday, the week before, I think has always been at 5:30, if I recall. Yeah. Um, Laura, now your children, are they? Are young, young or still at the Plymouth High School? The rest have graduated. Okay. okay. Yeah, he just finished his freshman year here. He really likes it here. Okay. Good. Thank you. And Janelle, you said your daughters are. They're both away at college now. Oh, okay. Yeah, they finished in 2016 and 18. Okay. All right. Good. Any other questions? Um, then the procedure will be for each of us to vote. Uh, you need to sign your name on the ballot. Uh, those ballots will be then given to Katrina. Katrina then will do a, a, a basically roll call vote out loud and... Um, and then Richard will ask for your vote then after the rest of the votes have been read.
Sally Isley is for Janelle Bone. Dan Steiner is for Janelle Bone. Um, Kathy Turner, Janelle Bone. And then Richard, your vote. Uh, Laura Lerwick. Okay, so then that puts um, two votes for Laura and three votes for Janelle. So, Janelle, our uh, new board member, um, and then if you wouldn't mind coming up here and you will do the oath of the office um, with Sally as the member. And Laura, thank you. Thank you. Yes. We may be calling you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And do we see her right away? Then? Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Congratulations. And this is your space right here. Thank you. And there's an agenda um, on there for you to follow up. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. All right. With that, we're on to uh, item nine. Board and leadership, uh, district leadership, strategic planning, legislative uh, update. Dan, what can you tell us? Yes, uh, as you're aware, it's the, the a budgeting season, and there's a, a bit of an impasse at the state level. Well, and we have not met with our legislators. That is this upcoming Monday, our legislative breakfast. Um, and so in the meantime, many of us have been contacting the same people that we meet with which are Devin Lemieux, and Tyler Vorpagel, and Terry Katzma. I've reached out to all of them numerous times and have had conversations with both Devin and Tyler. Uh, Tyler is, a, uh, is an alumni of our school district and uh, have just explained to them the impact of the Joint Finance Committee's um, proposal budget, which is a 0% on per pupil expenditures either for low revenue districts or just in the general aids. What that does for us, what I've been explaining to them, is that um, the COVID, which are supposed to be one-time dollars, not for operational costs, are, um, will be able to backfill and offset our potential deficit. However, it creates a structural deficit for us that when the COVID dollars go away, any increases in the meantime are going to, that those increases will still be there, like to insurances and gas costs and electricity and all the rest, that's all still gonna be there. But as long as our per pupil dollars coming in from the state remain flat, there will be a fiscal cliff. Therefore, we have to budget, even though we've got these COVID dollars coming in, we can't budget for increases to things like inflationary increases to insurances and all of those types of things. So it's going to force us to budget like we don't have any money, even though we've got these COVID dollars coming in because we don't know whether or not they, in the next biennium, will be able to backfill it with enough per pupil dollars to cover the difference. So I've had those conversations with and um, I've implored them to go back to their uh, uh, groups and have these discussions. Roberto Darling um, came out and with a letter and mentioned that because the way the Joint Finance Committee has put this out, this proposal out, it puts in jeopardy even the COVID dollars, which they're saying we should use to backfill expenses will even be available to us because 
in those COVID relief packages, there's something called maintenance of effort, which is that we have to spend at least as much on education as we had in the previous year, and they're fine at their regardless of what the rhetoric is that they're putting out, they're spending less by giving us zero. We will have less money moving forward by putting zero dollars on. So I think it's really important for you to understand that um, you're going to hear that um, we're putting more money into education than we ever have. But they're saying they're using that money that's coming in from the federal side as part of that equation. They may also say that um, they will be putting in dollars into education, but they would be not on a per pupil expense rate, or on, on per pupil dollars, which impact our ability to increase the revenue limit. They might be put on categorical things, and if that revenue limit doesn't grow by a per pupil number, that money just goes right back to, the, it goes, it's not for us. We can't spend it, it goes to, uh, back to the state, it goes back to taxpayers. So that's something that you have to understand when, when you're looking at these uh, uh, statements coming out from them. Now we have another meeting on Monday and we are um, we're going to focus at, on the increase that they've proposed for special education and try to find some compromise there because that could, that it could help us offset some ongoing expenses. But we're also going to continue to advocate for a compromise uh, between zero and um, something larger. So when you put it to them in that way about the structural deficit, were they, did they agree with that? Or are they just shaking their head no? Or what's the? They understand it. OK. Um, I think they're, I don't know motivation is. I, I've got my you know, suspicions about what the motivations are, but um, the, the end, I'm just focused on the end result, and the end result is that it will be harmful to this school district and the children and the families of the school district. And that's what I'm trying to get across to them. Okay. What else can we do? The Wisconsin Association of School Boards has advised that right now is the time for people to be contacting our legislators. Uh, they pointed out that it is 11 legislators on the Joint Finance Committee that are making this choice, but there are 121 other legislators who will uh, later vote on the whole, entire, the whole package. So, uh, you know, the I believe that Thursday is some type of a deadline here. Uh, for the Joint Finance Committee to wrap up their work. So I, it's, uh, it just seems imperative that as many parents, uh, anybody can contact our legislators. Uh, the 121 are capable of overriding the 11. Right, so when Bob had just asked, what, should, what can we do? What you can do is to contact your legislators uh, and um, if you have friends that you would like to discuss this with or make mention of this. Um, I think that that group of 11 on the Joint Finance Committee um, would be more influenced by um, business leaders than by superintendents. And so I think that would be important for if uh, there are people out there that care about schools and kids and what they have available to them for resources and for teachers, um, it would be a good time to get in contact with your legislator. And again, ours, the local ones that we meet with, and they do, we do get together. We have had good uh, conversations over the years. Um, it's Devin Lemihu, it's Tyler Vorpagel, and it's Terry Katzma for us. What about, what's your thought if Katrina or Jamie would put an email out to all the emails that you guys have you know, the parents and us and whoever else the emails go to, and just put a little blurb together saying if you can contact, you know, Devin and Tyler and um, the other one, and with the little blurb, what to say. I don't think we want to be getting into, I mean, we can give them information. Okay. Here's, you know, we could give them information about what this is. 
but I don't think we should be advocating for a political opinion on our part. That's why. I guess I my feeling is just because it comes down to finances. And if this can help us financially, you know, I think parents would be willing to take the time to email them. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts, Richard? There's a difference between action of the school board and things that we can say here in the context of the school board meeting, uh, encouraging people to make that, and then um, uh, stuff coming out from the school district. Um, uh, and I think that it, it's appropriate for us today to say, contact your legislators, but I don't think an email from the school district advocating, we, we had to be very careful about this during the referendum. Right. We could put information out, but we couldn't say to the people, please vote for this. And this is a little bit like that. Okay. All right. So we have some work to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so encourage your family, friends, anyone, and uh, reach out to our legislators and ask for more than zero. Right? All right, uh, moving on, agenda item number 10, finance buildings and grounds. Consider approval of preliminary budget for the 2021-2022 school year. Amy. Perfect segue. Perfect. <laughs> uh, at the Committee of the Whole, I presented our preliminary budget, which talks extensively about what Dan just talked about um, and the effects of it <clears throat> to us at this time. Um, we're going to enter the year with an, a net deficit of 415000 which is not unusual for us, but the important thing is to know that the initial amount of the deficit is $1.2 because there's no increase in per-pupil aid. Um, it's going to be offset by our ESSER II funds, like Dan mentioned, um, between 650 and 680,000. Even though, I mean, we designed our budget that way, and but ESSER funds weren't really meant for operating things, so we're, like all districts, just kind of figuring out what we can use ESSER funds for and what we cannot. Um, it includes the, the Riverview roofing project, which was a, you all approved already. Um, and then uh, there's another project that needs further discussion, which I included in this deficit too, um, just so that we could have a good base. But what you're really uh, approving tonight is $415,000 deficit. That's going to change. As we get more information from the state, um, you know, I designed the budget and budgeted high on a lot of things, on, on insurance, elections, and um, just other areas that, that we budget for, you know, like substitute teachers or, you know, things like that. I always budget what we, I want you to have kind of a worst case scenario and now, over the next couple months, we'll be kind of chipping that away as we settle on contracts with vendors and, you know, get amounts and rates and things like that, in insurance, enrollments, and all of that kind of stuff changes throughout the summer. So, but this is what we're looking at right now so that we can pay bills in July. All right. Uh, consider approval um, and, and action here. Anything? Yes. Yep. We have to have a motion on this. I'm approving the preliminary budget. Okay. So I need a motion to approve a preliminary budget. I can make a, <clears throat> I'll make a motion to approve the preliminary budget for the 2021-2022 school year. Second. Second. All in favor say yes. 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 All right, motion carried. Consider approval of the facility use guidelines and fee structures. Athletic Director Dan Knaus and Community Education Director Kathy Murray, the floor is yours. Oh. 
No, it's good. Um, well, we present it as well at the meeting of the whole, and um, it's this new facility guidelines that we've been working on for some time. And um, the general gist of it is our uh, philosophy on use and the priority of, you know, who gets priorities based on that philosophy. And then implementing the fees that are um, um, fees for basically, well, the goal is we want people in our school district community to utilize these facilities the most. So we have fees for youth, youth um, slight fees for youth groups in our community, and then fees for adult groups in our community, and then fees for everybody else. So. Great. Great. Uh, can I get a motion to approve? I move we approve the facility use guidelines and fee structures. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, consider approval of the proposed Schedule C updates and changes for the 2021-2022 school year. Dina. Yes, so at the Committee of the Whole, we talked about uh, two additional um, activities to be added to Schedule C, and that would be girls' high school golf and middle school tennis. Can we uh, get a motion to approve? I move we approve the proposed Schedule C updates and changes for the 2021-2022 school year. And second? Is there a second? Second. Uh, first and second, all in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carried. Consider the approval of the Keogh Virtual Charter School 2021-2022. Dan Mella. Yes, this is a uh, discussion of the committee whole as well. It's a joint venture for us to um, maybe get some of the students who have been going to online schools uh, in the past to come back into our school district, but yet we partner with the Keel School District who has a well-established charter school in um, that's virtual, and so we'd recapture about half of that student, but yet give that student the opportunity then to be part of our programming and our um, wonderful co-curricular activities and all of the rest of that. So uh, it's not intended for uh, a lot of kids, we don't have a lot of kids who actually are in virtual online school, uh, but it, it would be an option for some of them that currently are. So, All right. It's an interesting option to help. I mean, we're looking for ways to increase revenue right now, I think. You know, the things that we can control, and this is one of them, which is a cool idea. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, from a funding standpoint, the student is counted how then? They're counted as our student, and then we pay a fee to um, the Keele School District. And if it's a full-time student, it's $4,700, but that we pay as a fee. We receive 10-ish from the state, at least currently. Well, I guess we will, because it's not changing well yet. <laughs> um, but then um, if it's less than full-time, okay. then there is a formula. Uh, it's a formula. Yeah, okay. It decreases that. And it's an agreement. All right. And these are students that are physically live in the Plymouth district. Yes, that right. They would be our right. kids. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, can do we have an emotion? A motion to approve. Make a motion to approve the Keel Virtual Charter School District or school for 2021-2022 school year. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Consider approval of additional change to the 2021-2022 Support Staff Handbook. Amy. Yep. Uh, we talked about this at the Committee of the Whole Meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I proposed the, vacation, the new vacation schedule for Group 1 employees, I had missed a small group, um, there are group two employees, they are basically our secretaries. 
Um, they, right now in the handbook, they get two weeks of vacation following seven consecutive years of employment. And um, we are proposing that we change that to two weeks of vacation after five years of consecutive employment um, to better match the new schedule that we have and to make sure that we're all inclusive with our groups. All right, so this was discussed. Uh, <laughs> is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion first and a second. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, period of public participation. Is there anything? No. Uh, board liaison reports. Uh, community ed, Sally. Community ed. It's exciting to see all that they have going on. There's a dance club for first through sixth grade. Dog obedience class will be happening. Fitness center is always open. Do call and make appointments. And for those of you that love pickleball, there's a club that is happening in town. Also, if you love to hike or just walk, they do have both clubs available. So contact Community Ed. Any questions? Thank okay. you, Sally. Mm -hmm. uh, foundation, uh, well, um, the uh, grant uh, fundraiser will be uh, conducted during the homecoming week. Um, this will be a fun, our, our, every two years we do a larger fundraiser and the purpose of it this year is uh, to really concentrate on generating more revenue for our major grants and mini grants. So uh, keep a lookout for that. We are looking for corporate sponsors for our event. So uh, if there are any corporate uh, citizens out there that would like to, to help uh, sponsor the fundraiser, that would be fantastic. The grants go a long way. Um, we hear about their impact to the school at all our board meetings. And, um, and if we're headed towards some uh, challenging financial times, those grants are gonna be even more important. So uh, please plan to participate in our fundraiser. Uh, look for more information on the website and there'll be more information forthcoming. Uh, do you know what homecoming is next year? No, I do not, but. October 18th. When? October 18th. Uh, October 18th. All right. Hang on, I have it in my calendar. I think it's the 12th. Dan, Oct <laughs> homecoming, October 12th or 18th? October 8th. 9th. We're all, none of us were right. Wow. <laughs> it's the 9th. Following the baseball game that Plymouth to us right now. October 8th. October 8th. Okay. Okay. Thanks. There it is. <laughs> And Family Resource Center, Dan Steiner. Uh, Family Resource Center operates two programs, Parents as Teachers and Literacy Council Program. The Parents as Teacher Program um, updates are all parents, educators will be trained in Triple P seminars and group sessions by the end of July. It's a Bring Your Own Baby partnership with Above and Beyond Museum and Progressive Beginnings for Parent Caregivers with age, children's ages zero to two. Uh, this is a, per, currently a pilot program for current members. Um, opening up to outdoor face-to-face -face visits this summer um, using typical CDC guidelines, sanitizers, disinfectant wipes, and disposable masks. Working to get parent involvement for PAT Advisory Committee, um, the Literacy Council Program. We have new virtual tutor trainings scheduled uh, throughout July. Uh, workplace literacy, the women industry programs uh, back to in person. And um, so they're also looking for other um, manufacturers or other companies out there in Chibuane County that might also see some um, benefits to the English language program um, that they've de developed. And then they're uh, doing their US citizen um, class. Uh, it'll, be, well, it'll be ending the school year, um, but we'll be beginning, beginning again in September. That is it. Thank you. Bring your own baby. Yeah. <laughs> Versus else's bringing baby. someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, the last, Dan, the last thing you talked about was 
the U.S. Um, like people can go there to start taking classes to become a U.S. citizen. Is that yeah? Did I, yeah, is that a U.S. citizen class? Nice. I had not heard that. I wonder if that's something new that they're doing. I think they've done it for a while. Have they? George Todd. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you, Dan. Uh, personnel. Yes, we have a few uh, personnel announcements to make, uh, both retirements and um, resignations and um, some new hires. So we'll do the, re the, the two resignations first, and then we will ask for an approval, approval of that, and then we'll do the... Um, the rest. So the first of the resignations is uh, to consider the request to resign from Todd Hunt, principal at Riverview Middle School, effective at the end of the 2020-21 school year. Todd has been with the school district for 21 years as both a teacher and an administrator. Uh, the second resignation is uh, to consider the request from Emmett Williams, He's a business education teacher at Plymouth High School, and this would be effective at the end of the 2021 school year. Emmett has been with the school district for one year. I make a motion that we accept their resignations, even though it makes us sad. Second. All in favor, say yes. 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 Oppose? Oppose? I oppose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on, the, uh, and now we're going to consider the approval of contracts. The first is a 100% con contract for Courtney Sippel to teach 4K at Parkview Elementary School beginning with the 2021-22 school year. Courtney received her bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. This will be Courtney's sixth year of teaching. The next is to consider a 100% contract for Megan Quaid to be a reading teacher at Horizon Elementary School beginning at the 2021-22 school year. Megan received her bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and a master's degree from the uh, National Lewis University. This will be Megan's 15th year of teaching. Uh, next, we would consider the approval of a 100% contract for uh, Taylor Prager to teach 8th grade at Riverview Middle School uh, beginning with the 2021-22 school year. Taylor received her bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin La Crosse and her master's from Cardinal Stritch University. This will be Taylor's ninth year of teaching and her second stint with us. Uh, this is, uh, the next one is a approval of a 100% contract for Aaron Henke to be the band teacher at both Riverview Middle School and Plymouth High School beginning with the 2021-22 school year. Um, that is all of the contracts that would need approval. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? All right. They're approved and welcome. And we do have a support staff update. <clears throat> uh, we have a couple of resignations and, um, uh, from a different a couple of schools. Uh, Dana Gilhuber, uh, a custodian at Plymouth High School, has submitted her resignation. Dana has served the district for 14 years. Uh, Judith Faust, custodian at Plymouth High School, has submitted her resignation. Judith has served the district for two years. Melissa Hill, a special education aide at Fairview Elementary School, has submitted her resignation. Melissa has served the district for three years. And Laura Mosley, a special education aide at Fairview Elementary School, has submitted her resignation. Laura has served the district for three years. And there's no action required on the ladies. Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Uh, no items for the consent consent agenda. Um, Fifteen president's report. Richard, uh, just a reminder that next Tuesday at four thirty we have our meeting uh, for the district administrator performance evaluation system. So uh, one of the primary responsibilities of our school board 
is relationships and relationships in particular with our superintendent. Uh, Dan has uh, served us now for uh, one, one school year, one full school year here. And uh, it's incumbent that we keep a, a good, strong, healthy relationship, but we're also involved in the evaluation process. So that's happening next Tuesday at 4.30. Um, along with relationships, I think it's good to just remind ourselves that uh, regarding other staff and uh, uh, professional staff and support staff, um, our communications with them about school matters uh, really should go through the superintendent. In other words, if somebody, uh, an educator or st sports staff comes to us with a complaint about something that's happening in the school system, uh, you know, our, our responsibility is to uh, put them through the chain of command and then maybe at a later time it would land in our lap. You know, but uh, there's policies that are they're written to make that clear. And, um, uh, you know, it's, of course, at no time do we as school board members give any directive to um, anybody in the school system uh, other than other than to our superintendent. So, um, so relationships are, are important, and I guess that's what I wanted to just highlight today. Thanks, Richard. And uh, superintendent report, Dan. Yeah, uh, student and staff accomplishments is always the first part of this, and uh, we have a uh, ongoing activities this year in COVID we had uh, obviously the school activities have, have wrapped up for the most part um, FFA of course is kind of a year-round thing and, and um, other activities still go on but because this year we had an extra season added because some schools chose not to have sports in spring or in fall they created an, an extra season so some of our sports well, all of our sports are still going right now. So all of the spring athletic teams are currently competing in the WIAA regionals and sectional tournaments, and we wish them all well. Um, the boys tennis team finished undefeated in the regular season and won the conference championship. They also uh, qualified four individuals for the state meet that starts Thursday. Owen Plate, Reed Gehagen, John Wishman, and Jared Baltus uh, qualified for state, so congratulations to those boys. The girls soccer team won the conference championship this spring and won the regional championship last Saturday. They play in the sectional semifinals Thursday at home, Xavier. Xavier, yep, okay, that's what I thought. Good luck to them. And uh, moving on to this, just the, the district update. Again, uh, we had graduation uh, on uh, is it two Sundays ago now or one Sunday? I can't be all blurring together. What, it was hot. Whatever it was, it was hot in, on that day. But it was nice. We were able to, uh, we moved it. One of the things that we learned this year was we have to be flexible and be able to pivot on a dime. And so a couple things fell together for us where we had the sound, we were able to get the sound equipment just in time and the heat was going to be really oppressive. And so we were able to move it from where you had heard it was going to be in the in the stadium uh, to the park and we changed the whole seating arrangement and we were able to have most people in the shade on that day and the humidity was even though it was hot the humidity wasn't so high and so it turned out to be great but it's kind of an exercise in this year you know <laughs> we, things change all the time and in the past change has been a rather sl slow in in schools I think schools are changing very, very quickly now and, and getting used to being able to do that. And so we graduated 198 uh, kids, not all of them walk in that ceremony, uh, but it was a wonderful day. And it just brought out the fact that Dina presented uh, at the Committee of the Whole about the academic progress that was made this year. And uh, you were all given this chart, but for those of you viewing at home, if you see the green marks, though, that those are the students who are at or above one or two grade levels above where they should be at the end of a school year at a very high standard. And so all of that academic progress was made this year, even with all of that change and topsy-turvy differences that happened in a year uh, that um, was really unprecedented. So um, some of those things are going to be continuing on. Some of the things we learned, that was one of the themes from the beginning of the year. We're going to be changing a lot, 
but what can we learn and what can we do differently moving forward? Uh, Dina also presented about how the um, uh, teachers were still working on our data, looking for gaps all the way through. And one of those that was identified and was worked on during the course of the year was uh, uh, reading and specifically phonics at a lower level, a lower grade level. And just to show that you know the work continues, the teachers were meeting today. And they were working hard at it and working at creating the curriculum. And they're excited about it uh, and making the changes to address those gaps. Another thing that we learned from this school year was that the block schedule presented some opportunities for some different uh, types of education and some maybe some more depth about in, in certain subject areas. And so the high school staff has already been back in and working as a full unified group to prepare for uh, the upcoming school year where we're going to be using that every other day block schedule. So um, yes, the summers are open on paper, but when our, st our staff is uh, dedicated to the learning and growth of our kids and the well-being of our families and community, you can really see that they really work all summer in trying to prepare for and improve for education for the following year. So kudos to them. And that's my report. Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Item 17, adjournment. I need a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. First and a second. All in favor say yes. yes. This meeting is adjourned.